Hey, so this is a video for the Cyber Apocalypse CTF 2022 doing the uh, Web Challenge crypto support. Um, here's the little information for posterity, prosperity, posterity. I think it's posterity for posterity's sake, uh, whatever that word is. Uh, hopefully, I don't sound too stupid. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, the clip notes for this challenge is we're going to be using an XSS to steal a cookie which we're then going to use to access a page where we can change passwords and we're going to change the password for the admin user which we will then log in as admin and get the flag so going ahead to demonstrate that here let's go ahead and visit the site so we don't have source code um, for this challenge so we're just going to be relying on what we can gather from our burp proxy and we see basically pretty simple web page we have some kind of submission form and a link that looks like it's taken us to a login page um, so probably like the first thing everybody does is get excited right let's go to login and try some admin admin maybe some sqi injection um, i'm not going to get anywhere with that but if you one of the things you do look at is if you look at the script um, for the login you'll see uh, where is it so after you log in or attempt to log in if you get a 200 code back you're going to get sent to the tickets web page where if we just try and go to it it's gonna i believe it'll just re redirect us back to login uh, yeah so i mean it's typical kind of flow right you need to have you log in so you get a cookie um, and that cookie is what allows you to access the tickets page and without that cookie you just get redirected back to login um so we do have this form so one of the first things i would do is just uh, let's enter something and see what happens we see sending your ticket please wait um, if we look we see we're hitting an api tickets add endpoint and the message we actually get back is an admin will receive your ticket or review your ticket shortly so right away, that's kind of an indicator. I mean, we're doing a, a web challenge. Um, it's uh, one star, and you'll see these a lot if you're not if like you're new to CTFs and stuff. That this is kind of a pretty typical kind of challenge setup where you enter something, and then there's uh, like a bot running on the back end that goes and views whatever page it is. You know, spoiler alert: it's going to be slash tickets, and they'll look at our ticket. So it's just basically kind of like simulating a user. So what that typically usually always means is it's gonna be like a uh, cross-site scripting payload more often than not. Um, and since that requires something, someone to trigger it um, and have that malicious code run on their browser, that's why these challenges have like a, you know, admin to review your thing. Cause basically and we already kind of maybe have figured out that we're going to need a cookie to log in if we tried various things to log in and weren't able to if we could steal a cookie then we'd probably be able to log in so like the very first thing um i would try is like right off the bat let's let's just do a cross-site scripting payload um so i'm actually i should have set this up before but if we um open in grok uh, let's do it on it's, uh, and then I actually should open a um, port thousand one. Yeah, we'll just doing this curve. So one of the things I actually so like the first thing jump right into the script. But I actually one of the first things I'll try and do is actually just do an image. Um, lots of times that's filtered less often and I'll at least be able to see if I get a response where if I jump straight into a script maybe there's like a, a web application firewall or something that's filtering things out and I won't know well does scripts not work or is there a filter or what or you know is this the totally just a rabbit hole dead end avenue so I'll try image first um, uh, because that's more likely to work and then I'll know uh, I have 
a better idea of, I mean, it doesn't matter what we put here. We're just basically going to see if it gives us a, if it hits our, pings our server here that we have set up. So what this will do is on whatever page they're going to go look at, if th this is HTML injectable, um, it's going to try and load an image. The source of that image is a server we control. Um, and we see here, we get a request. So now that we definitely know that works, now we can go ahead and try something that will actually give us uh, maybe the information we want, which would be like a script. Um, let's just go ahead and do fetch. And we want, uh, what we want is a cookie. I mean, we name this whatever we want. That doesn't matter, right? But what we do then is document cookie. And that is our XSS payload. And then if it works, the bot will, this will run on the bot's uh, browser. And it's basically telling it the script so we can inside the script tag you can use javascript and we're using this javascript uh, fetch api to tell it to go to a website we have control over and send the document cookie as a uh, parameter in this url and we see it works so there's no kind of filtering or anything going on and we've already got ourselves uh, a cookie here so it looks like it is a uh, Java web token if we go to um, let's see if there's a just looking at it just to get an idea of what's going on we see it is a Java web token so we see the username here is moderator. Our UID is 100. This is um, to do with the cookie. When, I think it's when it's issued. I'm not sure if that's when it's issued and the backend keeps track of like when expiring it or if it's telling it to expire here. I honestly don't know. And then all this gibberish is the signature from the cookie. But uh, what we do know from before is that that tickets page we could not get to if we try and access it with uh, the cookie set, we should be able to get in. If I can remember how to, oh, here we go. Um, was that a cookie? So the name of the cookie was session. That's the, and the value is all that stuff we copy and pasted. Um, and we should be go good to go. So now, if we visit tickets, so you see we ended up, sorry, we loaded all of this stuff we inputted. Um, you can see there's a couple gibberish I inputted a couple times before I realized that uh, <laughs> I wasn't recording with sound. So, but the payload is also run in our browser, right? So here's like the image that didn't load. And here's the hit where we basically went to ourself and our cookie and everything. So one of the things we'll see here is we get this kind of information, um, this vault stuff, like what is that? So maybe trying stuff like go and look at various URLs to see if we could find um, a page for these users. Um, the only other thing we actually see is this setting. And if we look at this, this is kind of really where you want to go. So first off, right, like I'd go ahead and change the password. Um, let's just make it password. So now I don't need to, like if I, I don't know, screw something up or log out, I don't need to like re go through that cookie stealing process. Now I can just log in as what we know is the moderator. Um, and also doing this allows us to get, um, to capture the request. Because remember, we don't have, this is a challenge we're working with out source code. So any information we get, we're gonna need to be getting from capturing the request. So if we look at um, the flow for how that works, we're posting to the API users update endpoint. Um, and if we see here, we see the password and then this UID. So 
kind of right away makes me think um, what what can we can we change UI, UIDs for other users? Um, and I actually don't know. I kind of assess my, my own curiosity. Do we even need a ticket or a cookie to do so? Like, do we even need to be authenticated? I never actually tested. Okay, so you do need to be uh, authenticated. But can we change someone else's UUID or UID? So it looks like maybe we can. It's just telling us the user doesn't exist. Um, so kind of the, one of the things to try, uh, like when I did this first, I got all excited. And the first thing I actually tried was, where is it? Um, trying to, thought maybe these were user IDs, but um, if you actually think about it, the, typically the UID for the admin is, is one. Um, but even if you kind of didn't know that or didn't think about it, like one of the things, if you just tried to kind of like brute force a few, starting at zero, which would make sense, um, and moving up, you're going to see when you just do the first one, it says password for admin changed successfully. So it looks like now we can log in potentially as the admin. So if we go back and now try to log in as admin with the password we created, we are going to see we authenticated successfully and boom, we got the flag. So nice little simple challenge. Um, hopefully you got it. Uh, it's a good kind of like introductory web challenge. Like if not, don't worry about it. Like you're watching a video, right? So clearly you want to you wanna learn how to do these things. So just keep doing that and you'll be like well on your way to doing much better in challenges and grabbing flags and feeling pretty awesome about the whole process. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found something useful out of this and uh, yeah.